this is October from October Charm and I am here with you today with five tips that would be helpful when you're doing your diamond painting. So let's go ahead and get started. This is October from October Charm and I'm here with you today to go over five tips that I think are really helpful for when you are getting started on your diamond painting. I know this fad is kind of taking over, especially during this time when we're at our stay at home. Um, and so I have done a couple of pictures, some large, some small. I definitely have a few tips that can help you on your diamond painting journey. Obviously I had to learn a lot of these things on the way. It would have been nice if I had a little bit more info before I got started, but here are some strategies for you. Tip number one for when you get your diamond painting, what I highly, highly, highly recommend is that you initially take your canvas out of the box. Um, it's going to have wrinkles and dents in it. Um, so when you're working on this project, the last thing you want to do is really work with the creases or work against the creases. So I highly recommend getting that out, lay it out for a couple days, maybe a week or so. I have struggled through this before. When I got my first diamond painting, I immediately went to work and the diamonds that ended up along the edges or the creases, they ended up shifting a lot more than normal. So I definitely had to go back and rework them to make sure that they fit into the pattern that was given. So tip number two, which may be one of the most important uh, for when you're doing your diamond painting, is that it comes with the plastic over it. I highly recommend cutting that plastic into manageable strips. So what I tend to do with this is that um, in this unicorn painting that I'll show you, there's large sections of the dark background colors. Um, so that became its own section, possibly even two sections on the left hand side. And this is just to make it more manageable. If you pull all of that plastic up all at once, you're risking a multitude of things. One of the things is that the glue will dry out before you even get to it. So when the glue is nice and fresh, all you have to do is really just place the diamond um, on top of its little point. But if the glue starts drying out, then you really have to really push it into its spot in order for it to stay. Now with it being fresh glue, it does come with its own set of obstacles, such as if you put the gem down wrong, you might have to fight it um, to move it back into its correct spot. However, overall, it's going to be far easier when it's nice and fresh. So besides just the background, if you see large sections that are all the same symbol or color, I recommend trying to get those all into one strip so it makes it more manageable. Tip number three get comfy. You're definitely going to want to get comfy for this, especially depending on how large your picture is. But in all aspects, it's going to take you multiple sittings regardless to do any of these pictures. So the one that I did here today was the unicorn 12 by 16 inch. It is large. By that, I mean, it took me over a week. You want to get your comfiest chair. So this is my comfiest chair. It's got like the biggest plush on the bottom. I recommend getting a really fluffy sweatshirt or armband so that when your arm is against the edge of the table, it's not constantly getting indented or sore or anything like that. Because um, again, this will take quite a while, even the smaller ones. I think the smallest one that I did, it ended up taking a few days. It was just a couple of hours each day, but still at that point, like the edge on my the edge on my arm was getting um, pretty beat up. Tip number four is have all of your supplies already ready. I think the worst thing about doing any project is that you think you have multiple things and then you realize, oh, hey, I'm thirsty. So um, one of the things is having a drink with you. So obviously tea, coffee, water are gonna be my top three recommendations for that. So you want to have your drink. You also want to have the supplies that they give you. So they usually give you like a stylus, some wax, your vessel, 
and then uh, little tweezers for when you need help. They give you enough wax. <laughs> it took me only one picture to realize that I was not using enough wax. Um, so the wax is just used in your stylus to pick up the gems really easily. So this is the amount that they gave me two, uh, and this is all I used on it. So not very much. They give me both of these. You don't have to worry about running out of wax like I was. I'm always like worried that I'm gonna run out of things. Another thing is that the gems, um, I highly recommend uh, laying them all out in order. It makes it a lot easier to just grab and go. And again, don't worry about running out of gems either. So if you lose a few in the carpet or on the table or anything like that, or they go missing, that's totally fine. They have plenty of gems her color. Um, so I have like a surplus of gems that I can use for other projects now. And then with the vessel, they come with this handy dandy plastic one. And it has these ridges in it, so it makes it easier to like shake the gems so that they all go on the right side so it's easier to pick up. However, where I live, I get a lot of static electricity. So even though it has a lot of ridges on there to make it easier for you to grab them, they still stick to the ridges the wrong way. So I actually use a, a larger vessel like this. Uh, it's a little heavier, so I don't have to worry about accidentally tipping it over. And then as well as it can fit a lot more. So when I'm doing the larger portions, it's easier to have a vessel that obviously carry a lot more. So you wanna have all your gems in order. You wanna have your drink of choice. Use as much wax as you want. And then the vessels. And tip number now, I didn't necessarily realize I was doing this with the gem paintings, but I did notice that when I play like my video games or anything like that, sometimes I forget to breathe. <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous, but sometimes when I'm in concentration mood, I get way too focused on the tiny little details because you're looking at the codes and the little paintings and the little gems and you have a lot of things going on so just always remember to sit up straight and make sure you're breathing deep but yes definitely just breathe those were my five tips for your gem paintings however i do have a few additional recommendations now these are all just strategy based um so if you don't like it, maybe you can tweak it a little bit to suit your fancy. One of the biggest things that I do is that I put on a long movie or TV show for, that I don't have to look at. If you're putting on something that you're, yeah, you know, you need to watch, like anime, unfortunately I listen to it, a lot of it's subbed, so I can't actually be watching the show and doing this. Um, so things like Howl's Moving Castle, the office, anything like that where you know what is happening regardless of whether or not you're watching, those are a huge plus. Another strategy or recommendation um, is I, so I'm right-handed, so I recommend working on your project from left to right, top to bottom. So this is just to avoid your hand getting pressed onto the gems. So it does take a while for the glue to dry. However, if you're working on top of it, not only are you gonna get the indents all over your hands and things like that, if the glue is still too new, you can be forcing the gems off of its point and then it, you're gonna have to go and readjust later. And then same thing if your glue becomes too old, if you're putting a lot of pressure on those gems, um, they might actually take off from the glue and stick to your hand and then you kind of have to rework it as well there. You know, if you're obviously left-handed, you know, work from right to left, again, top to bottom. That way you're not working on top of the gems. And finally, my third recommendation is to get a larger pitcher. So when I first started this, I got a smaller one because I didn't know if it was going to be worth the money um however what i did find is that you lose a lot of detail so it's really pretty much like tattooing or tvs or anything like that where is if you aren't allowing your picture to have more pixels or more space you're not going to get as much detail so i started off with a very small one and um i did pick a picture that would it would allow for a little bit more wiggle room um, in terms of not being an exact picture. A solar system at night with like a couple on a beach that you could see like this big um, and then they were only like four gems and then you had the reflection on the ocean. So I did pick a picture that was conducive to a small pixels. However, once I was done with that picture, if you don't know what it is, you probably 
aren't going to get it just by looking at it. This one that I have here it is a, again it's going to be a 12 by 16 inch. I think this is great especially for um, I have just like a unicorn head with like a dark background so I think this is a really great size for this picture. My friend cat got it for me and so I think it's absolutely fantastic and then going forward if I want to get something that's like super detailed um, I did notice that there's like some Sailor Moon uh, diamond paintings out there in order to get that sort of detail though you go, you got to go much larger um, in order to be able to like actually make out their faces as small as these gems are you're still not gonna get that sharp edge or anything like that so those are all my tips and recommendations. Let me go ahead and show you some of the work that I was doing on this unicorn painting. This video is not sponsored and is not an ad. This particular diamond painting was actually gifted to me by my friend Kat. Um, we both really enjoy doing diamond paintings. We're both artists and we just find it as a great relaxing way to get through our day.
Thank you guys so much for sticking around. I hope these tips helped you with your diamond painting. Sound off in the comments what you think about these tips and recommendations and if you have any of your own. And then on top of that, I would love to see um, some of your diamond paintings as well. Or if you have any recommendations on which diamond paintings I should do next. So thank you again for sticking around. Please like and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. And check out my Instagram for some other great content. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.